Northern Stardom Observatory. Thanks very much to them. G'day there, Dylan. G'day, Wemo. Tele- telescopic things indeed. You are the telescopic thing here on the show. The only telescopic <laughs> thing that I have. Yeah, I guess. I've never, <laughs> I've never been described like that before. <laughs> sure. First for everything, Dylan. Um, today uh, we are um, we're talking about a few things, but first up, the um, Leonid Leonid uh, meteor shower. Yeah, well, the Leonids have been over um, happening over the last few nights. Um, they're not the most spectacular meteor shower throughout the year, but they they are they are very observable, and a lot of people have been getting up to watch them. Unfortunately, it's kind of been cloudy in Auckland for the last few nights, but I know of a few people who have seen. The meteor shower. How often and does, always, does it, this it's one? It's always come? exciting to see things streaking from streaking out of the sky. Oh, sure, from yeah. a certain point, you never know if one's going to come down and hit you. Um, how often does this particular meteor shower come around? Um, every year, it sort of it happens as the Earth passes through a certain point in space, which is full of debris from a comet, and um, so that's why that's why they seem to be emanating from one place, because that's where the sort of collection of small particles as where the comet went past. So the reason they're called the Leonids is because they are emanating from the constellation Leo. Okay. So they, they seem that's where they seem to come from. It's just what the area of space that Earth happens to be going through at the time. Are they are they um, static in that part of space? Like, you know, so is the Earth passing through because they're in one place or are they actually in a constant stream going through that point? Um... No, well, relatively static. I mean, nothing in space is still. Everything's moving to a certain extent, but they're. Um, I mean, compared to the Earth going around the sun, they are relatively static. So we're basically passing through the cloud. So that's why. Um, you, that's why you can see more meteors, more shooting stars after midnight, because that's when the side of the Earth that we're on is turning into the direction we're moving. Yeah. Whereas sort of from from dusk till um, midnight, then the side of the Earth we're on is facing away, sort of trailing on the trailing edge of the Earth's passage. And is the northern or southern hemisphere best for the for the Leonid uh, meteor shower, or or is it pretty even? It's pretty even. Um, Leo is a zodiac constellation, which means it's on the it's on the plane of the solar system, so it means you can see it pretty much equally from the southern and northern hemisphere. Hmm. So. No bias there. Um, the only difference is that um, you'll see it rising at different times. So here in New Zealand, we're going to see it. It's going to be late at night. So I'm, I'm heading up north next week. So is this like the perfect time to be out of the city and catching catching the Leonid media, media shower? Well, it's been over the last few days. So you might there might still be some tonight if you wanted to get up. In, in the, or stay up late yeah. tonight, but um, but no, actually, sorry, the last few days have been the peak time. Oh, bummer. But what are the, actually, there's always the um, yeah, there's there's always the Gemini meteor shower in mid December. Well, I'm not going Which away mid December, Dylan. Well, perfect time to plan a trip. <laughs> don't don't you plan your life around meteor showers, Wemmer? <laughs> no, but now I know that I should. Yes. Um, I need a calendar of sorts. Um, okay, well, let's let's move on from that because um, there's, there's three other things that are leading us to understand more about the solar system formation. What are they? Well, there's yeah, there's a few different things um, coming to light. First, we talked last week about the peanut comet, the, the comet that looks like a peanut. That's hardly two. So um, we saw that we saw that picture with all the sort of jets coming out of this double double globe looking thing that kind of looked like a bit like a peanut. Yeah. So um, a week or so on from the flyby, scientists are starting to analyse the data and they're starting to look at actually what causes those jets. That picture you've got up is actually a moon of Saturn. But, okay, um, we'll, we'll leave that for a bit later. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but they're actually kind of working out the mechanisms behind what's causing these jets, what's causing the, the gas to come spurting out of the comet, which causes the comet's tail when we see a tail. Yeah. And um, that's sort of that's helping understand what how how sort of um, basic bodies in the solar system are formed and the composition of them, which gives a lot of insight into how Earth was formed and sort of what what the very early nature of Earth. Because we we can't study 
ancient earth because the surface is constantly being replenished by the atmosphere, by erosion, by volcanic activity. Yeah. The, the surface is, 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 have been overlaid many times since the formation, but these comets and asteroids are things that are just left over from the formation of the solar system. So what they're finding is it's actually carbon dioxide gas, which is powering, powering the spurts. So it's sending all this water vapor out into the sky. It's um, sort of powered by the carbon dioxide fizzing off. Wow. I mean, that, to, to my understanding... It actually seems very similar to a, um, a soda bottle. Yeah, I suppose it is, actually. A comet is just an elaborate um, soda stream. They're kind of, yeah. Mm. They're bubbling soda streams flying through, the, flying through space. That's a nice way, to, way, nice way to think about it, and that's a nice way to think about the origins of the universe, just a soda stream. Yeah, it's a, bit, yeah, it's, it's, it's a, it's a sort of advanced soda stream. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> give it a give it a few a few billion years and you know you eventually, eventually get an Earth like planet and life. And <laughs> so if I if I um, actually I'm quite keen to buy a soda stream actually I just I just want to carbonate some water It'd be quite nice but anyway. Um, well now you can justify it scientifically. Yeah, just say well and so if I if I carbonate some water stick it in the um, in the pantry eventually I might build an Earth. Maybe yeah. That's a strange. Only one way to find out. Yeah, and finally, um, because I did, I've got, I've got this picture here of um, a Saturn's moon. What's this? It's one of Saturn's moons that um, has previously had. We haven't had a good image of because the um, we've got a space probe probe flying around Saturn. It's been up there for about a decade now, I think, called Cassini, and it's recently done a flyby of this tiny little moon called Calypso, not to be confused with the big moon Callisto. Yeah. And um, it's revealed a very strange-looking body. It looks it looks like a it looks like a snowy mountain. And I think essentially that's what it is. There's a lot of frozen water. Um, so it's not. It doesn't look like a moon like we would look at our own moon and being a nice round object. This thing. Um, I mean, this thing also looks like a comet-like peanut. Looks like a comet, yeah, but it's not spurting out gas. Yeah. Um, it's not. The reason it's not round is because it's not big enough. So things that are small, they don't have enough gravity to pull themselves into the smallest shape, which is a sphere. Mm. So they get these sort of um, yeah, potato or peanut-looking appearances. Interesting. Really? But um, that, that, that's um, the analysis is, is sort of yet to come out of what's what are the processes behind the way Calypso looks. Mm. But that's sort of another thing that's adding to our recent bank of knowledge on the formation of the solar system. The other thing is that um, the Japanese space probe that went out to collect a sample from an asteroid yeah. um, called Hayutake is um, they've confirmed that it has actually um, brought back a sample of the dust. So that, that, that's the news. Cool. And, and they'll be the working. dust will be yeah, the yeah, dust the... will be analysed. Great. Hey, thanks very so, much, Dylan. Uh, uh, yeah, so over the next, um, ex- next year or so, we expect to find out a lot more about the formation of the solar system. Cool, and if you want to Just, um, uh, find out about the soda stream of life, then go along to the Auckland uh, Stardome Observatory. Yes, you were going to mention about that? Yes, so I was going to mention that. You can see the night sky in the evening, so you'll be able to see the, the way the stars are arranged in the evening sky. And if you want to find out how the, where to see the Leonids, um then you will be able to see the starting of Orion. If you go to the Stardome, you will be able to see Orion rising in the east mm. if you go to the telescope sessions. And um, you can sort of trace where Leo would be by sort of taking angular measurements. It would be down below the horizon. Mm. And if you consider the Earth, Earth is turning from east to west. Uh, sorry, from west to east, which means it looks like the stars are, the stars are going to be moving as the night goes on from mm. east to west. Mm. So the stars that are in the east in the evening, when you'll be looking through the telescopes, will be moving gradually over. So as the hours go by, you'll eventually get Leo coming up in the east. Um, it'll be sort of in the early hours of the morning. So you can kind of you can kind of get this angular approximation of where Leo will be and where it will be rising. So you can you can put it into context of the evening sky and, and use that to find your way around the sky. Great. Thanks very much, Dylan. Talk to you in a couple of weeks. Thanks, Phil.